No. Just got in and I'm really excited because we have been doing some filming for the BBC on the ketogenic diet. Now, I was hesitant to get involved in this because often, you know what happens with journalists, they have their own narrative that they want to push on you, but I think this went really well and we got some good filming done. And I'm also having a really good day. So I've had loads of energy all day and it's quite late now, but just throughout the whole day, I've been buzzing on ketones. My therapeutic range is right in the normal range for me for optimal seizure control. So my seizures, seizures, why is it such a difficult thing for me to say? My seizure threshold has been really high today. So I haven't felt, I felt barely any of those symptoms, which is really good. But yeah, this BBC program on the ketogenic diet, I'm really excited about because I think we've been able to convey the actual science behind it and the nuance behind different types of ketogenic diets for different conditions and different situations, both for normal people, normal people, um, normal healthy people and people who have uh, different conditions, cancer, epilepsy, diabetes, type 1 and 2, like type 2 and 1. Um, and just people wanting weight loss and the cognitive benefits and all these things, having the context behind it, which is very cool. Now, I was hesitant to get involved in this bit, but I'll be being filmed in the next bit, either directly or indirectly. So I'll definitely be in the lab doing some stuff. Because um, my friend is Isabella, who we did film today, is... Um, doing very extensive work on the ketogenic diet, uh, a number of physiological markers that she's looking at um, on a bunch of, uh, a bunch of women, <laughs> which is very um, rare in this kind of research. It's usually, there's a lot of uh, research on athletes and also children with um, drug-resistant epilepsy, but we need a lot more, um, we need a lot more data on a lot more people, and that includes healthy women, because their hormones, they have hormonal cycles throughout the month, um, and although men have hormone, the kind of hormonal cycles throughout the day with variations in testosterone levels and all this stuff, and we're combated by all these xenoestrogens everywhere. Um, it's it's more pre you can predict easier with men. And I got a really good sleep last night, so I broke my bad sleep cycle that I was having that was lowering my seizure, seizure threshold. So I'm really pleased about that because I just feel like a a cloud has been lifted from my head. It's like my head was in a cloud. And I couldn't get out of it, and I was just bogged down by that. But just, yeah, weight has been lifted. I feel fantastic today. I feel really good. And I woke up, and my eyes looked so much better than they've been looking as well. If you look at the symmetry, even though it's obviously going to be messed up on that side permanently, maybe, I don't know, let's be positive about it and say it could heal completely, but... I'm seeing a lot more alertness in this on this side now. And today, as I said, has been excellent. I felt really good. And I love those days because I just feel like the happiest person in the world. I can do so many things that I can't do when I have a low seizure threshold. And I noticed this happens after a long fast. I only had one meal today, which was really early in the morning. I woke up at half four today, <laughs> half four in the morning, but I have a, had loads of energy. And then I had my meal, which was just a fatty meal. 
Um, and for the rest of the day, it's late evening now, it's night time, I haven't been eating anything, and I've had more and more energy, and I've felt better and better. And when I spoke to the people who were doing this BBC program, when we were filming, they really, really wanted to film me. And I was so tempted, but I'm always very cautious with journalists. But I, we did come to a kind of compromise, so I will be doing some filming with them next week. Really excited about that. Excited about getting my story out there. Um, and I felt like I really had to trust these people, so I'm going to make sure it's communicated in the right way. That's really important to me. But it's also equal, it's equally important to me that people have this information. I feel like when I started doing this, I was, I didn't know anyone else who was doing it. And it would have been this amazing thing if I had, if I'd known people doing that, doing similar, a similar thing. Because when I started doing it, I was only really doing it um, for the epilepsy. Because I had horrible epilepsy after my, um, had horrible epilepsy after my brain hemorrhage, which was as a result of the brain tumor. And that stuck with me and it got really bad. And I was having grand mal seizures all the time. So I adopted the diet to try and have a less severity of my seizures and less frequency of the seizures. And over the course of two years, I was able to get off the medication. It was very a very difficult process. But I was able to do that and transitioned onto a carnivorous ketogenic diet. I was hesitant to mention that to them because it's controver controversial. But I did explain to the presenters that you can get all the nutrients you need on a Paleolithic ketogenic diet, which is a zero carb carnivorous, well, it's a carnivorous ketogenic diet. Zero carb is a misnomer, we know that, because of, yeah, just the small amount of carbs in things like eggs and um, red meats and stuff, so things like liver, a small amount of carbs in there. Um, but it doesn't really have an effect on my blood glucose or blood ketones. And it's not a high protein diet. I mentioned all these things. I also mentioned it's important to test your blood ketones because in these TV programs, often they just gloss over what they've heard in, in tabloids, in tabloid, the tabloid press. Just about urine ketones and that's how you test for it and I was saying no that's what you're not using that comes out in the urine. Um, acetoacetate probably does have, well it does have some effects, uh, anti-cancer effects but uh, the main uh, ketone body is uh, beta hydroxybutyrate which has the main, the main effects that you want the anti-cancer effect. So that's what you're measuring in the blood. And I stressed that to them. I made them more clear that this is, um, for a start, this is a metabolic therapy. It's not a fad diet. Um, I also mentioned, even if you discount the anti-cancer benefits that I appear to have had, I've had um, a marked effect on my marked positive effect on my uh, seizure activity and my quality of life. And I have this therapeutic window of blood ketones and blood glucose where I get just optimal control of my symptoms and I feel incredible. I feel better than a normal person, a normal state. I feel I have a lot of energy, as you can see now. Just I feel just cognitively very sharp and very alert. I've had low and steady blood glucose throughout the day today. My blood ketones have been quite high, but naturally I produce high blood ketones. 
that's just me as a person, an individual. Everyone is different in that respect. Um, it could have been that I was just very efficient at using fat for energy before coming on the diet. Um, I've always been able to, to digest fats really well. Um, initially, not that much fat, but I didn't have too much of a problem with it. And um, I'm really excited for the next bit of filming. We're going to film in the lab next time for this documentary. don't know if I should call it a documentary or just like a program. Because I don't think it's like a really in-depth program. I was speaking to them about it and it should be shown in January. It's about 45 minutes long. And it's on the BBC so there won't be any adverts. So it will stick to that 45 minutes. Um, the nutritionist who's working on it is Ian Marber. He's actually really good. I was sceptical of him. Um, but he was very open to um, my story and how I communicated it with all the science. And I just made sure to tell him that I'm not just another anecdote. I'm having my... All my medical notes are being written up and um, I'll be ready to share all that. Hopefully in something big soon. That's the aim. I'm still writing. I've been writing for a number of years now. So I hope to have some sort of book published or um, I'll at least have a few articles, uh, a few, um, yeah, a few articles in there. Uh, Pub I'll have a few published articles at some point within the next few years. Hopefully I can have one done by the end of next year. Well, the next upcoming year, so it's not that long. <laughs> Sounds like a long time away, but it's not really. And yeah, I'm just really excited about these developments. My friend Isabella, she's amazing. She's looking at so many health uh, health metrics for the ketogenic diet on these on this population of young females and that's a, a group that's that we don't have much data on even n equals one experiments there's not as much um, there's not as much out there not as many people who are sharing that data and talking about it. So I'm really excited about that and I'm really excited about um, contributing to this. Uh, I, it's, a, it's a balanced documentary but it's not balanced too much. Well it's not too much in any way. Um, it's not biased in any way which is good. And um, yeah, I'm excited. The future's good. The future's really good. It's looking good. And things are really taking off. And I, I've learned a lot about myself as well recently because I had a difficult time when my, my seizure threshold dipped recently. And I was thinking, oh, why is all this happening? But I know why it was. I had environmental exposures, which I know are seizure triggers for me. Like, uh, I was triggered by paint. I, I, I walked past someone painting and it really just knocked me out, <laughs> kind of. Um, it didn't really knock me out, but, like, figuratively, I had this, uh, the focal seizures from it. A focal seizure is not where you go unconscious. It just affects one part of the brain in this part, a very localised part around there, which just makes me feel a bit strange and affects my speech and my balance a bit. I just feel a bit dopey and a bit zoned out. Um, but it's not really good for anyone to inhale paint. <laughs> People who paint should have um, masks on. It's actually been shown looking at uh, environmental exposures for that could be a cause for brain cancer, that there are these volatile particles in the air from things like paint and uh, vinyl chloride and companies like Dow Chemical and uh, Procter and Gamble in their cleaning products and 
yeah, there's just these chemicals that have these strong links to brain cancer and also lung cancer. But the, the brain, um, where we see these cancer clusters, where these there are these small areas and uh, people are getting all these glioblastoma brain tumors, and it's such a rare thing. But then you have this concentration of people who are all getting it. So it's it's clearly not a uh, coincidence. It's too 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 strong a correlation. Correlation does not always equal causation, but in this case, it's a strong suggestion that that's the cause. And these companies have been sued for billions of dollars in the past, so not a surprise. Look at McCullum Lake, Google McCullum Lake and brain cancer, and you'll see how Dow Chemical was sued for billions from this cancer cluster at McCullum Lake, which is a small area. So yeah, chemical exposure is a big thing for brain cancer and just it's just not good for the brain in general. It triggers seizures for me. And, uh, yeah, also another big trigger for me is an, a room that's poorly ventilated. So if I'm breathing properly and I have clean air, it's very unlikely I'll have any seizure activity, providing my diet's good, obviously, because diet's a huge trigger for me as well. So staying in that therapeutic zone, blood glucose, blood ketones, staying pos positive as well. Um, going for long walks, that's really good for me. My ketones shoot up when I go for a long walk, and I get out lots of negative energy, which I feel is very important too. It always sounds a bit woo when you talk about energies, but I do feel that that is important. I don't know how to describe that without sounding a bit, yeah, a bit crazy, but I do think it's a thing and I think it's important. I try to think as positively as I can, but because I have this kind of, I don't know if you'd call it predisposition or um, a conditioned response of sorts, just that's how I, I retreat to that state, that mental state. I need to do extra things. So I need to go for these, I need to force myself to go to, for these long walks. Sometimes I need to force myself to have cold showers, force myself to do exercise, um, wear these so I don't get exposed to the blue light. The artificial light does have an effect on me. Not spend too much time in front of screens because that affects me too. Mm, try not to get stressed, that's a huge thing for me. Um, yeah, I think one of the biggest things is definitely the clean air. That's something that I don't I haven't heard many people talk about, but that's a huge thing. Another absolutely massive thing, really huge, is when people have contrast dyes, um, contrast injections for uh, MRI scans to see what's going on in the brain, cancer-wise. cancer, cancer -wise. You don't need them. You don't necessarily need them. And um, they can cause a lot of tr problems. They can even... Um, contribute to cancer recurrence. So that's why I stay away from them now. And I also feel like my symptoms over time have uh, improved since I haven't had the contrast dye, the contrast dye, which has been a good few, a few scans now, at least a few scans. So um, I'm still feeling, I'm feeling really good at the moment just really really good and it's a nice feeling to have after that feeling of not feeling great so yeah I'll try to I want to I really wanted to film film them filming for this documentary but um, it was too risky I didn't want to do that even talking about it now I feel like Maybe I should be quiet about it, but maybe not. 
Um, and the biggest thing I did to date was that New Scientist article, which was a few years ago. I was hesitant to get involved with stuff like this, even though I'd, I've had loads of offers since then. Um, to do something, to be interviewed in this big way. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to do it on my own terms. That's the most important thing to me. To do it on my own terms, and then to have my own research published, and to get my name out there in the research space, so that I can have credibility when I'm talking about these things. Unfortunately, you need some titles to have credibility. It's ridiculous sometimes, but that's the way it is. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because it shows in a way that you know what you're talking about. But And it shows that you're an actual scientist. You're not just pretending to be one. Until you have something published, I don't think you're regarded as a scientist. I don't know. Um, but I hope that that's sooner rather than later. And I'm finally getting the opportunities that I wanted to have for so long. I have, my friends did say to me that I do need to get myself out there a bit more and establish all these fantastic connections that I have, just take advantage of that a bit more. But I'll do it in my own time. I'm a very introverted, quite shy person. I like to write rather than get myself out there and have all this attention. I want to get the information out there rather than necessarily get me out there. But if I need to get me out there to get attention for the information, then I'm happy to do that if it's on my terms and if it's the right way. So I've rambled enough, but I'm really excited to get this documentary out there. And I know it's not going to be completely balanced. There will be people talking about um, the E-World plate and all this stuff. Um, but it's a start and we've got the science behind us in, the, in this documentary. That's a key thing for me. So people can take it away with the, take the information away with them and do what they want with it. And um, that's all I have to say. I'll keep you updated on the um, on the program and anything else.